1872. Wayne Dixon, a British engineer, unveils two secret shafts in the Queen's Chamber of the Great Pyramid of Giza. In them, three relics were found. A stone sphere, a grappling copper hook-like object, and a piece of cedar wood. While the latter one is missing, the other two were shipped to England and are kept in London's British Museum. Unlike the King's Chamber shafts, these newly found channels didn't seem to exit on the other side of the monument. So where exactly did they lead? In an attempt to further probe the shafts, Dixon pushed a long iron rod which apparently got stuck and left abandoned inside the northern shaft, where it still remains today. Over a century later, in the early 90s, a new study and exploration of the shaft was underway. Using a specially designed robot equipped with a camera, Rudolf Gantenbrick managed to explore both shafts. On the northern shaft, he found Dixon's metal rod and a rectangular object with two poles. The grappling hook does have two rivets, and to quote Dixon, This thing is bronze-green with strong incrustations agglutinated, once riveted onto a wooden handle. It is possible that on the hook, Dixon found traces of wood which have since disappeared, so it remains a matter of speculation whether or not the hook was actually connected to the piece of wood. But the space between the rivets in the hook does coincide exactly with the space between the holes in the small rectangular object still in the shaft. Also beneath Dixon's rod is a wooden rod which is most likely to have been broken by Dixon's probe. A bit of wood broken off from a larger part measuring 5 inches nearby plus accidental fractured end. Accidental fractured can only mean that Dixon broke it himself. Since the lower shafts were sealed in stone and unveiled only a century and a half ago, and since Dixon mentions breaking off a wood piece from a larger part, we can assume that this piece of wood can be yet another artifact left by the pyramid builders. And since wood is carbon datable, such piece could even bring new evidence over the age of the Great Pyramid. Unable to make the westward turn, the robot came to a halt on its northern shaft exploration. Nonetheless, the camera was able to provide pictures of the continuing upwards tunnel and of what appears to be a rectangular structure where the square wooden rod also seems to come to a halt. What lies further remained a mystery for several years. Still, in 1993, during the exploration of the Queen's Chamber Southern Shaft and after a series of obstacles, Ganton Briggs robot came across a definite halt. Only this time, to everyone's amusement, the robot had reached a mysterious stone slab with two copper fittings. Immediately after the discovery of the stone slab, 65 meters up the southern shaft, all the exploration work came to a halt, and other problems began to emerge. Relations with the German Archaeological Institute, or GAI, and Egyptian Antiquities Organization, EAO, seemed to be failing for some reason. GAI crew members are dismissed, and Professor Stendelman shows time after time unhappy with Rudolf's draft for the press announcement. Frustrated with his reactions on the discovery, Rudolf resigns the project six days later. Nearly a decade after it in 2002, a new team is assigned to explore the shafts and is authorized to drill a small hole on the mysterious stone slab, now known as Gantenbrick's door, or simply put, the pyramid door. So the hole is drilled and the camera probes in to reveal A space and another door. Hieroglyphs and two copper handles on the back of the stone slab would also be unveiled a few years later when a new rotation camera was installed in Jedi, the latter robot explorer. On the day after, Dr. Hawass and the Jedi team decided to explore the northern shaft. It had not been fully explored before due to a massive setback. The northern shaft is in a straight line. The builders had to circumvent the Grand Gallery. Until that day, no one had seen what lay further up the small tunnel. After a number of maneuvers, the robot was able to make the turn and venture into the unknown. The team didn't know what to expect.
and there it was. 65 meters up the shaft, exactly at the same distance as the southern shaft, a mysterious stone slab with two copper fittings. Now, following the sequence of events, one may ask, why does the stone slab appear to be different in the 2002 exploration? This, according to writer Graham Hancock, is the same door, however, the handle on the right side of the door, as we view it in the image, was damaged and a piece broken off during the drilling operations in the second robotic exploration. No one seems to know, or if they do, they are not saying where the broken piece of the handle is. Another curiosity. In 93, during Rudolph's exploration of the northern shaft, the robot Yupuat, or opener of ways, couldn't make the westward turn to go further with the exploration. However, the camera was able to sneak peek at the continuing tunnel. My question to Hemotep.net home site of the Jedi team was, Rudolph's pictures show the rectangular structure or object ending at the tip of the wooden rod and possibly blocking a quarter of the tunnel's dimensions. What was it exactly? This wasn't shown in the Jedi's exploration, as far as I could find. Shemsu Sesen replied a few days later, but apparently addressing the wrong object. I haven't made any further questions regarding this matter, but back on the big picture, one can only wonder, what is the meaning of this bizarre monument? Was its design purely functional? Originally sealed shut and empty as old records tell us, with no apparent inscriptions. The Great Pyramid remains to many, the world's biggest mystery, built to last and to provoke the human mind with curiosity.